to produce the award-winning Toastcaster Communication and Leadership Podcast and host, a, host and produce the official Toastmaster International Podcast along with his co-host Ryan Lebeck. In 2009, Greg was recognized by Toastmasters International with a presidential citation for his use of technology to benefit the Toastmaster community. Greg grew up as a quiet and shy guy. He was introverted, but credit, credits Toastmasters for getting him out from behind the keyboard to places he never dreamed of going. Everyone, please help me welcome Greg with a District 99 Toastmasters warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Greg Gazin. Thank you, thank you very much, Mike and fellow Toastmasters. Now, I'm the one that's standing between you and the international speech competition, so we're just going to kick it off right away. Now, you see the title, Podcasting. Now, this session will be for you whether or not you're interested in podcasting or not, because we're going to be looking at communications from three sides of the microphone. And with every Toastmaster education, we have objectives, and our, our objectives today are to look at the value of podcasting and how important it is. We're going to be sharing some examples, but because of time, I'll just share types of examples and give you some illustrations and stories, And but I will be sharing links with you that you can use later to watch or listen, not watch, listen to them. We'll be looking at tips on creating a podcast and question and interviewing techniques. These are things that you'll be able to use whether it's for podcasts or whether it's for regular interviews. And of course, no session is complete without a little gadgets from, from the gadget deck. Now, I'm going to ask for feedback, but because of time, I'm going to ask the organizers if they can send out a link with a form. And what I'll do is someone could, well, if, if you answer the form, or if you answer, if you give you some feedback, I'll pick one person and I'll give you a one-on-one -on -one podcasting session. How's that? Seems fair? Okay, great. Now to address the elephant in the room, some of you might be thinking, well, podcast, we talk about podcasts, we're talking audio. And you might be saying, well, what about YouTube? What about, what about Instagram? What about TikTok? Well, video has its place and audio has its, has its place, but audio is not going to go the way of the dodo bird like what TV did into radio. So I wanted to address the elephant in the room. Now, podcasting is alive and well. When I first started podcasting in 2006, there were about seven or 8,000 podcasts. By 2016, 2017, there were about, I think, 80,000. By 2018, 2019, that was up to half a million. Just prior to COVID, March of 2020, it was a million. And now, how many do you think? Any guess? Two million. <laughs> uh, Russ got it. Five million. The Apple directory has about two and a half. The Apple directory has about two and a half million. So podcasting is, is alive and well. Now, I like to liken, I like to liken audio podcasts to, to, a, to a pen. And the reason I do that is because podcasts are very portable. You can listen to them anywhere. While you're, in, while you're in the car, while you're walking, which is something I do every single day, listen to podcasts. They're also very easy in the sense that they're easy to listen to, obviously, because there's so many different players available out there. They're easy to record. In fact, you can create a podcast on your phone. But they're also really easy to edit. So if you, you, know, you record a podcast, you don't like all the ahs and ums and errs, or maybe you use the word you regret saying, right, Russ? <laughs> then you can easily edit out, but if you try to edit audio, you'll get a lot of jumbles and jitters. It's also non-intrusive. Now, I have, trust me, I have seen people watching video in their cars by themselves driving down Highway 2. But seriously, audio is non-intrusive in the sense that, again, you can do it while you're multitasking, while you're doing something else. And the really nice thing about audio, like a lot of us will create playlists, but with audio podcasts, for example, they're, it's so easy to put them into albums and series and seasons a lot easier than you can with, than you can with video. Okay, so when we talk about podcasts in many respects, if you think about it, they're a lot like a speech. Every podcast will have a message, and of course, one of the four things, entertain, educate, inform, and, and persuade. Now, there is no visual. However, if you use great stories and you use great wording, you can create the visual. You can create the visual in people's minds. And the really nice, other nice thing about a podcast is that, according to Nielsen, people will listen to eighty percent of a podcast. Now, there are podcasts that are two minutes. There are some that are two hours. Sweet spot for a podcast is between twenty and forty minutes. 
So if you're interviewing someone or you're delivering content or material or doing a business presentation and someone listens to 80% of it, that's a lot better than the one or two minutes of a YouTube video where people are kind of clicking forward and forward and forward. Now I want to share a few resources with you, Toastmasters podcast related resources. How many of you here are familiar with the Toastmasters podcast? Just about everyone? Okay. Anyone actually listen to it? <laughs> 80 percent <laughs> yeah how many of you are thinking of creating a podcast okay oh nice that's anyone have here. one that's oh. why i'm here so you got to show me how to create one okay <laughs> anyone thinking of oh they think of creating one how many are just here just to kind of like you know you don't really care for the other two so no, i'm just kidding are you just here to, to uh just listen in you just listen to the podcast anyone okay no that's uh, that's fair enough okay so the one one of the resources is, of course, the Toastmasters podcast. You're familiar with that. It was originally started by Bo Bennett and Ryan Levesque. Ryan Levesque is the gentleman on the left in 2009. There's currently 200, we just released our 228th, yeah, 228th episodes. Now, like, you, like with every speech or every presentation that you do, there needs to be a why. Why are you creating it? If you're looking at creating a podcast, what's your why? As Simon Sinek says, what's your why? The why of the Toastmasters podcast is to amplify the magazine. So we create independently from the magazine, but we get articles ahead of time. And so what we'll do is we'll interview people that have written articles, people who are featured in articles, maybe they're quoted or mentioned, or maybe they happen to be subject matter experts, in which case there's a great, they're a great resource. Now articles, typically text and photos, there's a limited, li limited amount of space. So when you're reading the article, quite often you might have some additional questions that you might have. So that's where we come in. And then what we do is we dig a little deeper. We talk to the individuals. Sometimes we go way off on a different tangent and cover areas that are totally not related to the article, but maybe related to the person that was in them. So again, that's how we add value. But what I really love is when we can take articles, like this particular one here, I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with Sarah Safari. Okay, if you look at the title, she was literally hanging off Mount Everest, dangling on a rope, <clears throat> worried about her life, when 20,000 people were killed in Kathmandu when the earthquake hit. Okay? The article was really well written. Now, as Wayne this morning said, Wayne Lee, he said, picture and imagine. Remember he said that? Well, picture and imagine her sharing her story that is so gut-wrenching. She's out there just clinging for her life. And I still get, I still get goosebumps when I, when I think about it. So that's how you can add that's how you can add value. Here's a couple of others that we also do. We also have regular features. So we'll interview, every year we interview the international president. This year it was Matt Kinsey. We interviewed the world champ, which was, what was his name? Uh, Cyril Jr. Dim, and the accredited speaker, I guess that was Kevin, Kevin Snyder. And then we do have a lot of fun here. How many of you know who William Hung is? Remember American Idol, failed American Idol? Well, he's a Toastmaster, so we interviewed him and it was a lot of fun. And then sometimes we like to make fun of ourselves. I had written an article for the Toastmaster magazine called, Is There a Podcast in Your Future? And we thought, well, it would be kind of boring, Ryan interviewing me, so instead we created an episode, Confessions of a Podcast Host. Because <laughs> what you hear is this beautiful finished product, but all the stuff that happens, it's not the word I would use, but I will use that in this audience. So we kind of pulled the curtain back, and you know you mentioned Judy Carter? Well, we had a microphone malfunction, and what did she say? Greg, you gotta get rid of that $10 Radio Shack special. But it was a technical glitch that happened, and we actually left that, we actually left that in there. So those, that's a Toastmasters podcast. Toastcaster is another one that I'm involved in, another one, another great resource for Toastmasters. How many of you remember the High Performance Leadership Projects from the Legacy Program? A few of you? Yeah, okay. Well, this was my High Performance Leadership Project back in 2006. I thought, as Toastmasters, we speak, so why not create something that has voice to it? So I approached our then District 42 Governor, Mona Cooley, I know some of you know her, and I said, Mona, I would really love to interview you for a podcast interview. And you know what she said to me? What's a podcast? What's a podcast? She said, to me, what's a podcast? So it started off as a district podcast, and then afterwards, of course, the district had less interest in it, so I took it on, rebranded it as Communication Leadership and Learning Lab, I still do interview some Toastmasters, but I approach a broad spectrum of individuals. And But what I do is I also use it as a marketing tool for Toastmasters. Same. And then 
And so you have communication and leadership, but I always encourage people, and I also, uh, quite often I will mention Toastmasters as well. Just want to share a couple of memorable episodes. How many of you saw, I've seen the original Top Gun movie? Top Gun, Top Gun, yeah. Original. Original Top Gun, yeah. Now, okay, I did not get to interview Tom Cruise. I wish I did, but I didn't. But second best fellow here is named Dave Biobaranic. He is a Top Gun instructor. Like, Top Gun is a real thing. He, he's an F-14 Rio, so he's the guy that sits in the back of the F-14. He flew in the movie. He also was a consultant on the job as well. Now, I was approached by his PR firm. They said, hey, Greg, would you be interested in reviewing, because he was putting a book out. And I thought, well, instead of just reviewing the book, how about if I talk to him from a leadership perspective? Because <clears throat> if you think about the leadership skills that like, someone like him has to have, right? Split second can mean life or death. And he was so amenable to it. So we had a really great conversation, and he shared with me the fact that Tom Cruise did not fly in any of the planes. No matter what you read, he was there, and that's what he told me. Gentleman here, Dan Rex, anyone recall this? Know this gentleman? Yeah. Neil, do you recognize the picture? I, I recognize the studio. That's Neil's <laughs> living room, by the way. <laughs> Dan was here to pay tribute to Peter, who is also here for his 50th anniversary. Dan and Peter have an interesting connection, which you'll have to listen to the podcast to find out why. Dan shared some leadership experience, and we got to learn a little bit about Dan that you wouldn't otherwise hear, because he's usually talking, talking Toastmasters, and then... Another guy that I just can't seem to get rid of, I don't know why, he's appeared on the show three times. There you go, Russ. <laughs> Always a good chat. Russ shared a number of experiences, and again, you want to listen to the podcast to pick up, to pick up more. Okay, so if you haven't figured out by now what the three sides of the mic are, I figured you'd figure it out what the two are, but the three. You have your audience, your guest, and your host. I think you figured it out by now. Now, I know Steve, you said you were taking notes, that's great. I will be sharing this deck with you as well so that you can have it for, for the future. So, as a guest, obviously, as I hope, sorry, as one of the things you could do, you can obviously just listen to a podcast. There is a plethora of information, again, because you can listen while you're doing something else. There's an opportunity to absorb just a lot of information. But what you'll discover, and this is feedback I've had from previous sessions, after people start, get, start listening to podcasts, is that you'll start dissecting them. You'll be listening for ahs and ums and errs and structure because you'll be imagining yourself in those roles, whether you're the guest or the host, and you'll be basically doing Toastmaster evaluations. So again, you could benefit from podcasts just by listening. You can also participate. Now, how do you think you could participate in a podcast? Anyone? Oh. Uh, you can interview a friend. Yeah, you can interview a friend. But you could be a guest, right? You could be a guest on a podcast. And if you're, at, if you're being asked questions, what's that like? <clears throat> what is that like in Toastmasters? Table, Table topics, right? A great way to practice your impromptu speaking skills, but also a great way to showcase a product, a service, your club, but also showcase your skills. Because I know individuals who have been guests on podcasts that have gained, even gained business, gained business from them. And of course, the last one would be to, would be to create the podcast. So you're thinking of creating a podcast, and you ask yourself, okay, where do you start? Besides calling me, <laughs> level four elective. It's a level four elective in Pathways. And as far as doing a podcast, you can do one for yourself, you can do one for your club, you can do one for your business. Now, here's a couple of examples. I'm not sure if you can see that, but down here, this is, I think, was late 29, 2009. I can't remember what year exactly it was, but this was from, this was the election from a third vice president. Now, there's any mathematicians here? Four votes out of 11,000 is, is statistically insignificant, right? But again, it made a difference. So I did a podcast episode called Making Your Club Vote Count, which would make sense. The one in the middle, I interviewed a guy who created an app that, so you, didn't want to, you don't want to get ding when you're renting a car, so that was that. And then the third one, let's learn Turkish. I'm not sure if you can read that there. Well, in 2020 or 2021, I did this for a, group, for a district in Turkey. Wish I would have been able to go there, but it was virtual. But they did invite me to come, so I might take them up on it. I wanted to pick up a few words. Now, I didn't embarrass myself too badly, but I looked, I checked out the origin of the podcast, and it was a lady from Istanbul who moved to Spain. Her partner was Spanish, and she wanted him to learn Turkish. She created a podcast for him and for the world. And I thought that was pretty good. And she's got like 55 episodes. So there's some, re there's some really good reasons to be able to create a 
podcast. Now, if you want to connect Toastmasters and podcasts even more, there may be more than one, but this is a club that I visited. Podcasters Toastmasters, they're in the UAE. They meet the first and third Mondays at 7 p.m., which is about 8 or 9 a.m. our time in the morning on Mondays. And they're dedicated to digital content media creators, which is really cool. So they'll play a, a portion of a podcast and then they'll enter, then they'll evaluate it. So it's actually pretty, it's actually pretty, pretty cool. You can also create your own podcast, which is something that you probably really want to do. If you create your own, then it's yours, right? You can control the message, the content. You can decide if you want to have a guest, two guests, three guests, no guests. You can have Russ on your show, no problem. <laughs> Oops, where are we here? Oh, we have up screen. Sorry. So you can have guests. You can have guests. Oops. So you can have guests on your show. Now, one of the things when I talk to people about creating podcasts, similar to creating blog posts or writing articles or even trying to get another speech in, is they say we just don't have any time. So quite often, I'll use the term with them as I'll say, "Oops, why don't you repurpose something? Why don't you repurpose your content?" So I want to share a little story about how I was able, and it includes podcasts, how I could repurpose content. So I was sent a copy of the 2020 Guinness Book of World Records, and the PR firms, they, they send you stuff, they go, oh, can you review it? They go, we want you to write an article. So I went back to them, I took a look at the, I took a look at it, and of course, just for, for the podcast, which is Communication and Leadership, I could write an article about, I could review the, I could review the book, but it wouldn't fit into the podcast. <clears throat> But then I realized what type of leadership skills that you needed to be able to win a, or to be able to beat a world record, right? Like becoming a world champion of public speaking. So I went back to them and I said, would it be possible to interview them? So they lined me up with interviewing two world, two world, breaker, world record breakers and an adjudicator, which is a judge. So what I did is I interviewed them for the podcast then I wrote an article for Troy Media called Leadership Tips from the Book of Guinness World Records. This guy here is Reverend Kevin Fats from Coburg, Ontario. He pulls a plane on his back. The other person, stood, she uses a cane, she flips a handstand up on, on one arm, upside down, and she throws a bow and arrow into a, into a, uh, a target that's 40 feet away. So I wrote the article, so pod, podcast, article, then my club approached me one day and said, Greg, could you do a speech maybe this week on leadership? And I thought, well, why don't I talk about the lessons I learned from these guys? So then I basically wrote a speech, and then while I was at the club, I recorded it and did another podcast. I'm not sure if you can see the picture, but that's a lady there. Her name is Britt. She's from, I think, Washington State. Absolutely, absolutely incredible. So again, what I've done here is I've repurposed content, which saves a lot of time, effort, and energy, and it gives you material that you could use. So think about how perhaps you could do this, use this for your club, or even for, your, even for yourself. Okay, now before you do anything, of course, it's gonna take time, there's gonna be some kind of commitment. So again, before you touch the keyboard, you wanna ask yourself, okay, if you're going to be putting out a podcast on a regular basis and people are expecting it, the Toastmasters podcast we put out on the first and the 15th of the month, but to be able to do that, you have to schedule, you have to have time. So how many, how often, you're probably gonna need some kind of hosting service, which we, might, we may have time to touch on. And then, what format are you gonna use? Are you gonna do solo by yourself? You're gonna have host or co-host. But of course, if you're gonna do that, what about your co-host schedule, right? If you're doing a solo show, you can do it at two o'clock in the morning, it's no problem. How many of you know this guy besides Russ? <laughs> What's his name? Dan and Jaya Hediarachi, okay. I live in Edmonton, my co-host lives in Massachusetts, and where does Dan and Jaya live? Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, so I was the one that had to get up at quarter to five to get ready in the morning. So those are things that you, that you want to consider, and you also want to consider how are you going to record it, right? As we know, technology never fails, right? <laughs> <laughs> so obviously there's going to be some logistics with respect to that. So again, you're going to think how you record it. So now you're at the point where you're thinking, okay, I'm going to do a solo show. Just start off by myself. What am I going to do? So here's a few ideas. You can tell a story just like you would give a Toastmaster speech. You can read a story, like a storybook. There's a gentleman named Terence C. Gannon out of Calgary. He has a podcast called Not There Yet. And what he does is he takes historical news and he looks up old things and, and news stories and he writes his own story about it. 
guy's got the voice that you can sort of listen to forever, kind of like James Earl Jones, you can just listen to his voice forever. So that's what he does. You can also do a conversation. Now, I haven't mastered this one, but it's similar to a soliloquy where you're talking to the microphone and the other person, you're, you're responding as if they've said something, right? It's like, oh, how's your day? Yeah, oh, oh, it's going great, that's great. Where have you been? Oh, Cal, oh, that's great, Cal. I haven't quite mastered that one, but there's a few people out there that do some incredible ones. Or, again, you just take a speech. Number, Toastcaster number 10, I did a, a podcast called Toastmasters for the Holidays. And what I did is I shared my experiences visiting clubs in Montreal, San Francisco, and Mesa, Arizona. And in Mesa, there was actually a lady who used to belong to the Norwood Club here in Edmonton. Yeah. And she said, do you know Larry? And I said, yeah. And she said, well, tell him I finally finished my designation. So I thought, okay. <laughs> Oops, there you go. Okay. Now, you're starting your podcast. You got the microphone in front of you, as I saw the other, over the last day and a half here. This is not where you hold your microphone. It's got to be here, but sometimes it's uncomfortable and it's intimidating. But if you're going to be delivering a podcast, you need to remember your Toastmasters training. You've got to remember it, right? Because that passion is going to come through. You need to do that vocal variety and gestures, even in a microphone. How many of you gesture when you're on the phone? Yeah, I see you walking down the street waving your hands. Yeah, absolutely. And then you also want to make sure that you articulate if there's a particular word or a name or a place because it's global, right? Your podcast can be listened to anyone. You got to really be careful about the jargon. I heard two, one, two ladies from a, a radio show in the Midwest I was listening on the internet, and they were incredible ambassadors for Toastmasters, sharing these fantastic stories. But they kept saying DCP and DTM and AC and CL, and it's a lost opportunity because people who are listening don't understand or don't know what it is. And of course, the acronyms, you gotta be careful. I remember when I was, a few years back, when I was a member of the Canadian Interactive Alliance. Gotta watch that, that, that acronym, right? <laughs> Hi, I'm from the CIA, okay, I'm not talking to you then. <laughs> and then of course, spell th you wanna spell things out. Email addresses, websites, or even simple words, right? I have a painting website, you know, Color Your World, C-O-L-O-R in the US, C-O-L-O-U-R, Canada, Barbados, UK. So you gotta think about little things, you gotta think about little things like that. Now if you wanna practice, Russ uses his garage, right? <coughs> With the birds. I do it out on my walk. Some people do it in front of the mirror. How many of you have heard of Udly? Ah, oh, just a couple, okay, great. Well, Toastmasters has created a partnership with Udly. It is an AI-powered public speaking coach, artificially intelligent. And they have a partnership with Toastmasters. It's free, you can access it through Basecamp. And what you can do is you can sit in front of it and record video and audio, or you can upload something that you have. <clears throat> and what it does is it analyzes it, and it will give you feedback. And it will even generate a transcript with timestamps. Isn't that pretty handy? There's a public version of Udly, and there's a Toastmaster version of Udly. They're slightly different, but they accomplish the same thing. So I really encourage you to check it out. I interviewed, I interviewed the Udly co-founder. It's Toastcaster episode 168. And I talked to him about the partnership of Toastmasters and he went through to, and talked a little bit about how Udly works and how it came about. It works surprisingly really, really well. And you can store a few things up there as well. Actually, it works really well. Okay, so we're gonna to touch upon interviews a little bit. Now we're not gonna go specifically into questions, but again, interviews are a great way to practice your, your Toastmaster skills. But again, it's also a great opportunity to learn some new things because you can control the questions. The other cool thing is, we put on a podcast that's 25 or 30 minutes, but we've had an opportunity to speak to that individual for sometimes an hour, hour and a half, and as Russ, you can attest to, some of the people, they charge thousands and thousands of dollars per hour, and I've had a few people that were willing to answer personal questions, I guess we call it personal, but questions that are, I was of interest to me with respect to what they, what they train. Um, my co-host Ryan, one of the things he said to me when I asked him this question, when I was going to put this in the session or in this slide deck, I asked him, I said, what did you learn from doing interviews? And one of the things he learned from doing the Toastmasters podcast was develop, to develop rapport with the guests. And I thought, that's a really interesting answer. And when you develop rapport with them, it makes the conversation a lot easier. But he said, no, he says, Greg, he said, it helps me with my clients to develop rapport, especially new ones. Because you, you ask questions to new clients quite often to get to have a better understanding of where they're at. That was something I never even thought of. And the other thing too, of course, is if you're doing an interview, 
as opposed to doing a solo microphone in the middle of the night or in your bathroom or in your bathtub, I guess. You're forced to prepare and you need to keep focused. I think that's, that's probably a natural thing. Okay, so we're going to take about 30 seconds here. And if you're going to interview someone, you're going to need to find guests. So turn to the person next to you and have a little discussion as to how you can find guests. Okay, folks, just for the benefit of time, we'll, we'll just cut this short, but just a couple of people who want to share. Where are some places that you can find guests? Anyone? Oh, hang on, sorry. Uh, former clients. Former clients, absolutely. Ross? Your club. Your club, absolutely. Anyone else? Back there? Where can you find guests? Listen, there's a champion of this district at night Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Mikey? Bring your business or personal community. Absolutely. So their guests are everywhere. Just like sometimes people say, I don't know what to speak about. Same thing. There's, there's stories everywhere. So here's a few places. And there's that guy again up there. I wonder who. That was Russ when he was on the world stage. Yeah, I took that picture. Yeah, I took that picture from the tele from the TV. And then this guy down here. Yeah. Sure who he is. The guy on the left is Russ. Yeah. That's Darren Tay. Oh yeah. no. Yeah. Were you thinking of Russ when he got here? Russ, were you thinking of Darren Tay or Aaron Beverly? The other, when you were saying earlier, Darren Tay or Aaron Beverly, were that, was that one of the people you were thinking no. about? No. Couldn't remember it. Yeah. Again, friends, experts, social media, magazines, or if you listen to a podcast, just say, you know, I might want to interview that person. There are matching services. Now, it's not a dating service, but it's, <laughs> it's, there are matching services that match up guests with hosts, and there are a number of them that are actually free, and then, of course, and then, of course, Toastmasters. So there are, there are absolutely guests everywhere. Now, Wayne Gretzky once said, you won't score on 100% of the shots you, you won't take. So I stole that a little bit and twisted it, and I said, if you want to interview someone who doesn't know you or about your podcast, you'll likely never get in to interview them unless you ask them. So it doesn't hurt to just ask. Now, if you are asking someone, think about what's in it for them. Where, where can they benefit? Now, with the advent of self-publishing, there are books coming out every single week, every single day. And there are always lots of authors. I get 20 or 30 pitches a week from PR firms for books. And some of them are really good. Some of them are like, okay. But some of them are actually really, really good. So those are people who are always willing. They're always willing to be on, uh, on your podcast. Now, if you're going to be on a podcast or you're going to have a podcast, you wanna, you're going to want to prepare your guest. And what you'll do is you will be sending them information ahead of time. But there are a couple of things that you really want to do. And one of them is the most important thing is you want to start off on a good foot. You want to gauge their comfort level. Now, I interview quite a number of authors, and they're great with the pen, but the minute they start speaking, they have trouble. In fact, there's a gentleman, uh, Rick Lauber, Caregiver's Guide for Canadians. It's a bestseller. I work with him on, uh, as a freelancer, and he joined New Entrepreneurs Toastmasters. So I got him to join, and he was, able to be able to, he was able to go on global TV and all the other channels. Toastmasters helped him because his natural way of speaking would be like reading a book as opposed to speaking out in, in public. Also, don't assume just because somebody is a platform speaker, professional speaker, that they're going to be comfortable one-on-one -on, -one on a microphone. I interviewed a gentleman, and let's say his minimum charge is $5,000 US. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Greg, he says, does that sound OK? I, I don't want to sound stupid. I'm a little bit nervous. And I'm going, you're nervous? <laughs> I was a little intimidated talking to the guy. but. Uh, as we heard last night, he, he was an introvert, and he was okay. Basically, he blanked out the stage, but one-on-one, -on -one, he was very, very shy. 
So it's challenging. Now here's a technique that I learned that works so well. Well, first of all, you don't tell them when you're recording. You don't tell them when you've started recording, because it doesn't matter, you can always edit pieces out. Just start chatting, depending on what's going on. You know, how's your day, how was your trip? So what's, you know, tell, them, tell me a little bit about your, tell me what's happening with your kids, you know, how are things in Atlanta? Just start talking and then hit the record button. And when they say, when are we gonna start? You go, we've already started. And they've just been comfortable, and it really works. It really, really works. You want to, again, you want to warm them up. You offer some do's and don'ts and some basic tips are you, basic tips, microphones. You want to make sure you try when possible to have a separate microphone in the headset so you get the best possible audio. Air conditioning and of course for us in Canada, furnaces, because they make a lot of noise. You try to see if you can do that. You know, shut the door, let them know that, or if you have, a, sometimes the ladies have really long hair and if they're wearing a lab mic, it could brush against it. Typing on the keyboard, rustling papers, those are things that can interrupt the audio. And then, uh, what else is there? Well, there's lots more things. You also want to try to be as natural as possible. We try to avoid giving out the questions ahead of time, but if someone insists, we will. Or we'll just give them a general idea as to what we're gonna talk about. Because we had one lady we had interviewed for Pathways, and oh, she was incredible. However, what had happened was, when it was time to answer one particular question, it was like she was reading a laundry list. And it just, so we stopped her in her tracks, we tried to rephrase the question, Say things like, tell me how you feel about that, or what's your thoughts, or what's your opinion? It's kind of harder to do a laundry list when you ask someone their opinion about something. And that actually, that actually does work. And of course, you want to set the tone. You want to be comfortable, you want to, you want to be prepared, because if you're nervous and they're nervous, it's going to make for a really difficult, for a difficult recording. Now when you're the guest, now you could, this will also apply to you can share with your guests as well, you want to be prepared for the obvious. And you might say, okay, Greg, what the heck is that? And we had a gentleman who was promoting a book and an event, and we couldn't get that information ahead of time. Sometimes someone will send us a PDF copy of the book or a narrative. Or... And when it got to the point in the interview where it was like, okay, when is this event? What's... He goes, well, my assistant takes care of that. So it was a missed opportunity. We put it in the show notes, but it was a missed opportunity to have it in, in, the, um, in the recording. And you also want to determine expectations. Lady here, her name is Jillian Mitchell. She's a voice coach out of BC, out of BC, British Columbia, and she talks about all things voice. So, what we wanted to do is her article was about tone, so we focused in on the tone. I asked uh, I asked Russ the other day. I asked him about customer service, about how many different types of speeches, how many different types of aspects he has. He says he's done over hundred, it's over hundred speeches, and you said you have a customer service module that's what eight modules, one to two hours. So it's such a wide. It makes it a lot easier for the guests and also easier for the episode if you're going to be narrowing in on one particular area. The other thing is, is that if someone is an expert in six places and you talk about all six, then you lose an opportunity to bring them back a few more times. So that's something to think about when you're interviewing your guests. And I'm sure it's the same thing when you're going to a client, you want to be doing a presentation, you want to focus in on what's needed for that individual audience. So that's determining the expectations. Watch the jargon we already talked about. Relevant examples, let's say you're being interviewed about financial planning or let's say retirement. Well, if you're talking to college students, the, the narrative is gonna be different and examples are gonna be different than if you're speaking to empty nesters, right? Absolutely. And the other thing with examples is numbers. Sometimes you hear these stats and statistics. Now remember, we had regional training at the Mall of America in Minneapolis and they gave us this fun fact card when we got to the mall, and it was so cool because the Mall of America is 4.2 million square feet. West Edmonton Mall, I think, is like six million square feet. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not an architect or a designer or an engineer, so I just can't picture 4.2 million square feet. So it had a whole list of different things that that was equivalent to. One of them was they could, you could park 32 747 jumbo jets at the mall, and you could line up 258 Statues of Liberty. So again, it's just the idea is that if you're gonna be sharing numbers and statistics with your, with your audiences, is to make sure that there's some context. And again, all of these pretty much apply to doing your present speech presentations as well. Now with respect to interview questions, we're not gonna go into questions per se. However, one of the things that you wanna to try to do is avoid surprises. The gentleman in the picture is Greg Van Borsum. He's in the middle, he's the guy in the middle. Now he was a master marksman, he was a bodybuilder, he was the dancing coordinator for Happy Feet, you know the movie with the penguin? When I articulate, dance scene, not dancing coordinator. And he was also the, the weapons coordinator for Mad Max Fury Road. I had an opportunity of interviewing him 
before, before the movie actually came out. Now, what had happened was, in the article in the Toastmaster magazine, there was 15 years between the original Mad Max movie and this one. And at that time in Australia, things were really bad. And he had friends that had taken their lives. And one night, he was thinking of taking his own life. But then he opened his door, he looked in on his kids, and he said, you know what? It's this, I, it's, it's for them. So, I'm not gonna say, okay, question number three, tell me about the time that, you're not gonna ask that kind of question, right? You wanna ask the question ahead of time. I mean, unlike the news, right, you know? Tell us about what really happened, right? <laughs> they want, they, they wanna trip up, they wanna trip up all the politicians, right? Well, you don't wanna do that, you wanna have a really good story. Now, Greg is now an accredited, accredited speaker, only one of 90 in the world. And I approached him because it's a difficult topic. He, that's what he speaks on. He speaks on suicide prevention and he works with organizations and people. And I said to him, if, if I want to approach someone, now he's a Toastmaster, right? If I want to approach someone about that, I said, how would I do it without having them relive it, what, what they went through? And what he said to me was, he said, if you asked him, he said, do you mind if I ask you a personal question? And so that I can better understand and I can help my audience understand. And what he said to me, he said, if you come from a place of understanding and education, then you're going to get a positive result. And I did that a couple of times, and it was just amazing that it worked. Because if you just pop someone a question like that, and you, they just, that could, that could ruin the whole conversation, but also, you make them feel bad. That's something that you want to do. You want to maintain the mystery, so if someone got their stiletto stuck in a floorboard and fell off a stage, which happened to one of our... Toastmaster International individuals, you don't ask them about, tell us about that, you say, tell us about an episode with the shoes. Let them tell the story. You don't want, as an interviewer, let the cat out of the bag. Open-ended questions, that's very table topic-like. You don't want to ask questions that you end with a one or two word answer. And then, even if you have your question set, be prepared to veer a little bit. So if somebody gave an, had a, used some jargon, or they had an acronym, you want to ask them for understanding. See if you can get them to clarify. And this one I like, it's kind of cool. This lady is, her name is Lily Wexu, and she's a voiceover actor, and she also does spit parts. She was on Grey's Anatomy and a few others. She's actually Canadian. She's trilingual, originally from Montreal, now living in California. And one of the questions we always ask, we find a way of fitting it in, is how people join Toastmasters. And she said, well, at first she said, well, my mother had been telling me for years to join Toastmasters, but she said, I had a bout of acne, and I had to keep away from the camera for a while, because everything is high definition these days. And it was funny, it was just, it was so hilarious, but it also led to a great conversation. So sometimes you think a question is like, well, that's kind of a dumb, boring question, but it can lead to some really, really incredible surprises. So anyway, now for those of you who are more gadgety type people and you want to know a little bit about recording, that's where we're going to head now a little bit. When you are recording, when you can, is you want to try to record it in one sitting so that you have the same background noise, right? Uh, you can hear that fan up there. So if you record it in here half and then record it in somewhere else half, you can actually hear the difference. You also want to check, double check, and triple check the hardware and the microphone. Like you really have to do it because, oh, it was, I set it up last night and it was just fine. Or I put my computer to sleep. We all know that stuff will happen. A good friend of mine had an opportunity of interviewing a famous individual's father in Ontario, some of you may be able to guess who it is, in, an, in front of an audience of 3,000 people in an arena. He got the interview because it was live. He didn't get a recording because the cable was plugged in, they did a check the night before, he didn't get any, he didn't get the recording. Redundant recording if you can. I sometimes will put my phone on the desk to record. Like I'm recording this right now for myself because obviously I want to play it back and see what worked and see what didn't work. And then sometimes I'll actually say something brilliant. It's rare, but sometimes I will. <laughs> but then I'll forget what I said. <laughs> you want to record, you can sometimes record noise. So for example, that fan, that hum, if I record some dead air, sometimes some editing programs will allow you to get rid of it. And then, especially if you have more than one person, is record on multiple tracks. Because when two people are having a conversation, they never talk over each other, right? <laughs> See, I thought that would elicit a laugh. I guess it didn't. So <laughs> if you record on multiple tracks, then you can separate the tracks and you can stop people from recording over each other. And the other thing is, keep recording. Even when you're done, keep recording. How many times have you finished a speech or a table topic and you said, I wish I would have said this? Well, Robert Cravallo, accredited speaker, he's kind of like a Hawaii 5.0 PI guy from, 
from Hawaii. Anyways, after we were done talking, he started sharing how he would fine tune. He talked about fine tuning a speech, and he used the analogy of, of polishing up his motorcycle, his Harley. I thought, wow, that's really cool. So we clipped that because we kept recording, and then we actually found a place to edit it back in the recording. So again, you want to you want to keep recording, okay? So in terms of getting started, there's a plethora of ways that you can record. You, you, you can Google some of those. But in terms of what we use, the Toastmasters podcast, there's a program called Audacity. It's a free program. You can have it for the PC or a Mac. Then we also use a program for the Mac called GarageBand. Now, for remote recording, we used to use Call Recorder and Skype. The problem with Skype is, is that you're very reliant on the internet. If there's a bad internet connection, the other party is not going to sound very good. Plus. There's only two tracks. So you have two hosts and one guest, two people are gonna be on the same track. We use a program called Zencaster. And that's not a typo, there's no ER at the end, it's just R. And what that does is it records at each location remotely. So it's as if you're recording locally, and then it uploads it to the cloud. And that's how we gather that information. And then you may or may not be aware, but Zoom does have a checkbox feature that says record audio on different tracks. Now, if there's 10 people, you're gonna get 10 tracks. But but at the same time, you can avoid that, uh, avoid the over, the over punch. There's also programs like Alitu, like this pro there are systems or I guess products like Alitu where it does everything for you. There are some where you can record into your phone, upload a picture, type a narrative, and then it's published automatically. Again, you might want to Google some of those. I like to do old school. There's a screenshot of Zencaster. I guess you can't see some of it because it's faded out here. As you can see, there's three, there's three tracks. This is Audacity that we use to record. Uh, Brian, Brian. Ryan uses a program called Descript. And what Descript does is it converts this into words. Sometimes it's not perfect. And then you can edit the words, and then you can send it back. And it works pretty good. But I'm, I'm still old school. I kind of still use this. And then what we do is we have a common template that we both use so that the music, the opening, and the close of the podcast are all the same. Okay. Here's a couple of gadgets you can use. The PodTrack P4, that's a dedicated device for, a, for podcasting. This is a Zoom H6. This is an audio recorder, but it has six inputs. You could actually have six people at the same time. But it also has some different types of microphones for different environments. And some people would use that for recording. I know Mark Hain, those of you who know Mark Hain, he uses this quite, quite regularly. There's a couple of different mics. This is a little lab mic. I have one right here. It's about $50. And what it does is, the cool thing about it is that, as you can see, it's got a, an adapter at the end, and it's got a second port, so you can put a second microphone into it. However, it only records on one track, so that's a bit of a downside. But the other thing it does is you can flick a switch on it, and you can put a pair of, of headphones, so that you can listen to what's going through the mic. Because sometimes when you're talking into the mic, you don't know what's going through, and that's really important, especially if you're gonna look at the recording afterwards. There's a couple of other examples. Snowball and Blue, I think some of you have seen those. Oops. And then there's a couple of different types of microphones. This one is so cute, it's called a Go Mic. Isn't that cute? <laughs> it's a little portable mic, it's wired, a little portable mic. The, uh, this one here sits on top of your monitor. And the Samsung Q2U, that's the one that I actually use for podcasting, and that one you have to have right up to your mouth. But it also has a port in the back so that I can plug in headphones so I can hear what's going through, what's actually going through the headphones. And then if you got lots of bucks and you want wireless, there. Now there are Bluetooth mics, but sometimes you gotta be careful because Bluetooth does have a lot of interference. You wanna make sure that, that you actually test it. Now where are we at for time? How much time have I got left? Uh, 15 minutes, great. Oh, I must, be, I must be talking pretty fast, okay. I was worried about time. No. No? No. It's 3.30. So okay, because I was told I was supposed to stop at 3.40. Oh, okay, so I get 10 minutes. Okay, good, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, super. So we match, you have time for a couple questions. Okay, so when someone says my podcast is on Apple or Google or Spotify, it's not actually on there. What Apple, Google, Spotify, they are distribution platforms. So they're like directories. That's where you can get it from. But what happens, it's actually hosted at a different location. Now there's different hosting platforms. There's ones that are called, you may have heard names like Podbean or Buzz, Buzzsprout or Libsyn. These are hosting services that you could use. Now, you may not want to put your podcast on your own website. And the reason for that is that most websites are not designed to use a lot of streaming bandwidth. 
unless you're, you're going to do a podcast where you're going to have three people on the podcast and you might get you know, six listeners or something, but if you're expecting a lot of, a lot of traffic, first of all, it may not work very well, and secondly, your, your host might, might, may throw you out. There are services that range anywhere from free to hundreds of dollars per month. Problem with free is that it could disappear next year. The service that I use is Podbean, and it's $99 US per year. You can probably find some hosting for five to seven dollars US per year. They will host your podcast. They'll have like a website as well, but they will also give you, they'll also make it easy for you, and sometimes it's just check boxes, sometimes it's a little bit more involved, to connect to Google, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, so that your podcast is on all of those services. Now with respect to resources, for those of you who want to take a picture of that screen, <coughs> There's a link there. I will also ask the organizer to email this to you. Okay, that link will tell you, take you to a Dropbox folder that has lit copies of links. It also has a video recording of another previous session that I did that you want to listen to. It has a copy of these slides as well. It also has a copy of the article, Is There a Podcast in Your Future? It's a, it's a cover story. It's, it's quite in depth in terms of if you're interested in podcasting and it's focused on Toastmasters. There's also a sidebar with 10 tips on how to be a really great guest. And as we said, you don't want to start right away with podcast. Being a guest is a great way to start. Now, I think we have time for, oops, I see, I see people are still taking pictures. Okay. Well, I have a question. We'll get to it in just a second. Okay. <laughs> just want to finish that off. I will just eat one minute at the end, so if someone can let me know when we're two minutes out. Okay? <laughs> great. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, I guess you're right. Next question. <laughs> Questions. <laughs> Go ahead. So 20 years ago, I interviewed my grandmother and her brother and sister, and I have it recorded. Is that my first podcast? Absolutely. You can turn that into a podcast. Do I want to do some editing on it? Maybe clean up the audio a little? Great. There you go. Yay! Congratulations. Okay. Anyone else have questions? Not everybody all at once, huh? <laughs> Thoughts? Anyone? I guess I have a quick question. Sure. Uh, you talked about the power of interviewing somebody who's written an article in Toastmaster magazine. Yes. The Toastmaster magazines are no longer published in print form, and that's the way things are going to go, I gather. Mm -hmm. Printing presses are going to stop around the world in the future. So have you noticed a difference in the shift when, when people read it online or they read the article in the old, old printed form? Okay and how that translates to the podcast. Okay, well I'm glad you brought that up because first of all, I, I, don't, I can't really speak for the stats in terms of who listens to what where, but what you did help me bring up an interesting point which I neglected to mention is that when we do interview somebody for the podcast, what TI does is that what the folks at the magazine do is they will embed the podcast at the beginning of the article or somewhere in the article. So on the print version, which would be the, yeah, the online version, because they do create a PDF. The PDF is fixed. The PDF, the PDF is it's as if it was the magazine. But they will embed the podcast so that you can listen to it right from there. Because yeah. the Toastmasters podcast, you can get it at toastmasterspodcast.com, all of them. Google, Apple, Spotify, the last 25, but also the ones that are embedded in the article. I don't have those statistics for you, but that might be something you could check in with the, with the magazine. I know myself, I miss the print, just simply because I liked in the morning with my coffee, I like to sit and read a book. At night, I read on a reader, like a Kobo or a Kindle, but in the morning, physical copy of my of books. Mm -hmm. so. so I sort of hope I answered part of that yeah, question. Yeah. Okay, yes, So do you make money on it? No, I don't monetize my podcasts. Okay. I don't, because do I, people do? there are a number of people that do, and you could Google how to monetize your podcast. Some insert, some, you know, some will insert advertisements. I had one, I had one little sponsor, it's not really a big sponsorship, but they help pay for some of my hosting, and I just sort of mentioned them in there. But I purposely don't monetize simply because I prefer to just do it as a service. Am I almost done? No, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. How do you decide on a topic that would have appeal to a wide variety of people? And how do you kind of narrow down your choice of topic for a podcast? Well, it's ironic because I get so many pitches that usually it comes from somewhere. But for the Toastmasters podcast specifically, is often we'll be sent the articles ahead of time. And sometimes, t sometimes the folks at the magazine, they're great to work with, by the way fantastic to work with. They will sometimes ask ahead of time for people who were involved in the articles whether or not they'd be willing to be interviewed. So that often helps because sometimes otherwise we can't connect with them. Because we'll send them an email and they won't, uh, they won't respond. Sometimes I'll try, if there's something that's of a timely nature, then I'll try, to, I'll try to tie that in. 
or if it's a release of a new product or a new service or a new book. Like with Udly, I reached out to the co-founder right away because even though Udly wasn't going to be rolled out to the district or rolled out later, TI had already put out a press release. And it was funny because that's how I found out about it. I found out about it through my journal hat, journalist hat, not through my TI hat. Because when I approached the magazine about the press release, they go, what press release? Mm -hmm. They didn't get it till later that day. <laughs> Yeah, you're welcome. Two minutes up? Okay, one last question, or very quickly, and then. Um, I just had a question. Yes. Are there stuff that you would refuse to do, like pitches that, were key, that came to you, but you didn't want to discuss those? Sometimes that they could be maybe politically difficult, or if it's a topic that we're not comfortable speaking about, then we typically don't, but mostly Any things examples? like. Any um, examples? That's a good question. There was someone that had a book that they, it was about um, was it Christianity in the 21st or 22nd century. They were putting out a new book and they thought we'd, we'd do a podcast. And it was just not a, it wasn't a topic that I was familiar with or knowledgeable, I just wasn't comfortable with. The reality is I have so many pitches that we get and so many opportunities. So the other thing too is I try to err on the side of caution, right? As opposed to, you don't want to take a chance on something being too politically on one side or another. That's just not my style. The whole idea is that I want to share good stories with the audience. I do need to wrap up because I know the contest is coming up, so I just want to wrap up. And I think you've probably gained by now that podcasting has lots of certain benefits, like personal benefits in terms of just personal enjoyment, having fun doing it. But there's also a lot of experience and a lot of experience you can gain and a lot of parallels between what we do in Toastmasters. And it's great learning experience. You, you make great connections. My co-host, Ryan, and I have only met a few times at international convention, but we're practically like brothers as we talk to each other basically every single week, which is really great. And he's in Massachusetts, and it's a lot of fun. So I'm going to challenge each and every one of you. I don't think there's anyone here that doesn't have a smartphone. Is somehow, sometime between now and the end of the conference, turn on your voice recorder and record a minute of something, maybe an observation that you have, or perhaps... Everybody rush to Russ and get him to know. Just maybe talk, maybe talk to one of your coworker or your fellow Toastmasters about some interesting topic. You don't have to issue it, you don't have to publish it as a podcast, but try it because once you start, you will really, really see the value. And I hope you found the value here today. Back to you, Mr. Toastmasters. Ladies and gentlemen, I was really intrigued to hear about the podcast that Greg was uh, talking about today because our club pre president at Northern Lights, Austin Krauser, and I were talking about doing a podcast for Northern Lights not that long ago. Yeah. And we turned to Greg and we asked Greg, of course, Mr. Gadget, how, how we go about that. So Greg, I mentioned that to my wife, that we might be doing a podcast. She says, well, don't, if you're going to do a podcast, don't be too charming, witty, or intelligent. Just be yourself. Oh. So, <laughs> and, so, yeah. and he's got the voice for a podcast, right? Yeah. So, I, I wish I had that voice. So if we go ahead, I'll take that, I'll take that advice. But Greg, on behalf of District 99, we want to thank you very sincerely for being one of our educational speakers today here uh, at the window. So thank you very much, Greg. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we have uh, the Jubilee A. I believe that's downstairs. Uh, we have the International Speech Contest, so we'll see everyone there. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. How are you? I didn't want to cross-drink a video.